So welcome to the online trainer show. My name is Ren Jones. I am one of the unique and spectacular hosts here. We're going to get you started. We got a great topic today, by the way. We're going to talk about the secret to high quality online assessments. Now, this is near and dear to my heart because not only am I a knucklehead on your favorite podcast, I'm also a corrective exercise specialist. So I get down with the assessments. So I'm, I'm all for this episode. I'm probably going to stay awake the whole time Jonathan gives the information this time. I can't promise you anything, but I'll get the first half for sure. Uh, so so what, here's something's been going on with me, and I'm going to keep this short because I know we don't have a lot of time, uh, and I won't say who was late, but his name rhymes, his name rhymes with Bonifin. Uh, so, so I've been getting the inboxes. Are you guys getting the inboxes? Like the, the coaching people are killing me right now in my inbox, the six-figure coaches. And here's, the, here's what I hate the worst. And, and this may be a lesson in of itself, and I, I'm going to keep this very short, I promise. Um, you know, do a little research before you approach somebody, right? Oh, like, yes. you, you, here's what I really, really hate. Like, I do a video probably every five seconds online. There's, there's a video for Fitness Jones training. Videos here. Video. Somebody approached me, hey, I do graphics. You know, let me know when you start doing video. And I'm like, how could you oh. not know? Like, if you're going to approach a professional, please – it's the internet, for God's sakes. You can know everything about this person before you go pitch them. Just do a little reading, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, so, so don't, don't send stuff to my inbox. They're, and, they're not even trying. They're not even trying. That's what you're like, saying. They're not even trying. They're just, just no, no attempt. You know, you send me something to say, hey, if you ever get interested in hats, you know, let me know. Dude, I'm wearing a hat in, like, almost every picture I have <laughs> online. You know, it's, like, it's like approaching Jonathan and saying, hey, you know, if you ever start, decide to start wearing V-necks, you know, let us know. Like, you know right away that you don't know oh, about I get, that person. Uh, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what the worst part is. I get pitched by friends of mine right. asking me, saying things like, hey, I noticed that you're interested in fitness. Looks like you got a great thing going on. Uh, <laughs> oh, have, have you ever thought no. about taking your business online? By <laughs> friends of mine. No. Because no. it's, I mean, it's no. clearly virtual assistants or something like that. Here's um, where I take offense, though. I got no problem with cold prospecting. Right. I, I respect the hustle. I mean, when you sold insurance door to door. I did. You got to respect it's the true. hustle. I mean, it's hard. It is hard it's to tough. do. I respect it. I'm tweaked out right now because Amber is bottom right and Carolina's top left. It's and weird. Never happens. It's weird. But that's irrelevant. I don't like My it. issue is this. My issue is that these accounts are sending me messages making it appear that they come from one person when they don't. Right. That's my right. issue. We have yeah. a rule in my company where if somebody is messaging through me, they always introduce themselves first. Hey, like, like if my assistant's answering an email from me. Hey, right. it's Bobby. I got to this message before John did, and I thought you'd appreciate a faster response. Yeah, right. it's way better. That's hey, this honest. is Alina from the PTDC. Don't pretend like you're somebody that you're not. Right. Yeah. Like, no. right. It's why? careless. So that's why I take offense because every single time I just send back, I'm like, hey, tell like whoever, let's just say Jeff. It's not actually anybody named Jeff, but I won't say the actual name because I won't throw Don't him say under the, the bus. It's like, hey. Don't do that. Tell Jeff I say hi, okay? Like is always my response. But <sighs> that's, I immediately lose respect for the business as well. And I lose a lot of respect for my friend when I see that kind of stuff. I got no problem with code prospecting. I got no problem with building a system whereby a virtual assistant does the code prospect. Right. Like, no problem with that. What I have a problem with is when you pretend that it's coming from you. There you go. That's the problem. So we're, we're talking about the secret to high quality online assessments today. Uh, Jonathan Goodman has already dropped some knowledge. Don't think the funk on a nasty dunk, okay? Like, make sure that you're talking to the person that you're talking to as the person that you are, not the person that you want to be. Jonathan Goodman, he's got pros in different area codes. Uh, is it time to start the online trainer show, Jonathan? You want to take it away from here? Hello, my name is Jonathan Goodman, and welcome to the online trainer show. Today is episode 19, and we are talking about the wow. secret to high quality online assessments. Now, I'm probably gonna be on fire today because I had three days off without my son over the <laughs> past weekend, which for anybody who's a parent knows that when you get back, you feel like you're actually kind of a new human. 
<laughs> so we'll yeah. see how this goes. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. So, Jonathan, we're talking about assessments. You got pros in different area codes. You know who's good at assessments, training programs, coaching videos, communications, habit tracking, marketing, payments, and more? There's just one place, PT Distinction. You guys knew that. PT Distinction. Uh, Jonathan Goodman has worked out a deal with PT Distinction. We give you 60 days at no cost. You can light it up. You can go get them. You, too, can have pros in different area codes. Uh, go to uh, online trainer.com slash PTD uh, to take advantage of that deal. Not only that online trainer Academy, we love the online trainer Academy here. We're all online trainer Academy pros, all of us, each, each and every one of us uh, go to the OTA uh, OTA. It's, it's the industry's sort of gold standard for online trainer education. We reveal powerful, powerful techniques and strategies guaranteed to get you results. You know what? Results. I like to say results twice. Uh, so go over to online training.com slash academy. Uh, yes, I have that memorized. I know you're impressed out there in podcast land. I'm going to shuffle the papers, though, because I know you guys are used to the sound. Uh, so, Jonathan, tell, t- we, we want to talk about assessments. We, wanna, we got a lot of things to discuss. We got a short amount of time. Um, Kettle's here. She was here first. Uh, she's never here first, so she thought immediately that she was fired. Because when she logged in to the podcast Zoom link, she was the only one here. I assumed the same thing a couple of weeks ago when I logged in first. I was like, surely Wayne Brady is going to replace me. He's going to be on the next episode. Uh, Keto is Did absolutely. Wayne Brady say he was interested? He, we'll circle back yeah. around to that, Jonathan. Yeah, uh, no, but if he did, if he did, I need to know. Because I don't. I, I don't. Would, first of all, him. I'll ask the questions here, sir. Uh, second. <laughs> I'm trying How to defer good to whose line is it anyway? Can we talk <laughs> about that? No, no, we can't. There Kettle... was a go on YouTube and search <laughs> Richard Simmons right. on whose line is it anyway. <laughs> That's it the is best. Yeah. The funniest thing. <laughs> is it? Probably on the internet. Dude, Love it. Richard Simmons Love is it. hilarious. Yes. And he is, I mean, he's on fire with these really? guys and it just messing with them. It is. It's yeah, awesome. Google it. Like, it. stop listening yeah. to this. Like, you don't need to listen to that. <laughs> Do not stop listening to this podcast. Online trainer or whatever. Just, Should I add this to the show stop, notes, John? Stop <laughs> listening to whatever we're talking about and Google Richard Simmons on Who's Lines <laughs> Anyway and watch it. Oh, my gosh. And you will not be disappointed. It so From funny. the man himself. Let's, let's, let's defer quickly. <laughs> to our, this is already off the rails. Let's defer quickly to our in the field correspondent, Catalina Belmares. Uh, Hello. She's, a, she's got a different background today. I'm excited about that. Jonathan, mm-hmm. Amber, and I are all grayed out. Kettle's got the beautiful colors behind her. I think, she, you know, she's like very Care Bearish back there. Behind oh. you. <laughs> I am at a stare, different Kettle. location. I am okay, at a different okay. location. I'm enjoying some days off with the kiddos at Se- a family cottage. Secret and undisclosed location. That um, is correct. She, That's also why I'm rocking the, the bikini top because I'm jumping in the lake right after this. <laughs> well, the whole podcast might be in the lake before episode 20 happens. <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, so such a professional. She took her work and traveled with it. Uh, that's, that's the kind of dedication that you don't normally see uh, in this industry. <laughs> Keto, you, well, you're, you're the best. But you and know what? That's first. that's what we and that was first. And that's what we can do when we're online trainers, though. Isn't nice. that magical? Nice. Right? nice. Beautiful segue. Nice, nice. Oh, beautiful Kato. I mean. That's, we've we've gotten so much better at the segues. Um, so <laughs> everything's going good there with the vacation. Everything's cool. You everything, guys are... everything is wonderful. It's sunny, beautiful day. We're good. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Jonathan, do you want to talk about stuff today? Do you feel like talking about things? We've got these, we've got these assessments again, you know, as I went through national Academy of sports medicine. So, and I also started online coaching before, before I got introduced to Jonathan many years with 2013, 2014, I started online coaching. So, you know, I had people send me video assessments, uh, but I'm into the assessment thing. So, so talk to us about number one, is it, is it important? Why is it important? You know, Share let's with the class. About, let's talk about assessments in general first, and then we can right. talk about online assessments. All right, I love it. Is it is it just me, 
I'd love to hear you guys' opinions on this. Even Amber's, I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Yeah, Amber, wow. unmute yourself. We're wow. going to hear from you. Well, we still haven't bought you a mic, though, so the sound quality yeah. is going to be awful. Now it's a party. Is it me or are assessments one of those things in personal training that every trainer kind of secretly pretends they know what's going on with them, <laughs> but most of the time, most trainers actually have no kind of no clue what – the assessment is really telling them like I you know I've had these conversations with physiotherapists a lot I mean it's not that you shouldn't be but I mean the amount of false conclusions that trainers come to based off of assessments that are not done accurately done well definitely don't lead to the type of information or facts that you're telling a client that happens every single day in every single gym it's one of those things where I actually started to really think about this. I almost got fired. I'll tell you a story. I almost got fired from the gym that I worked at many years ago because I refused to follow their assessment protocol really? because I was just like, this is oh? just, this, this doesn't make sense. They, they basically said, if, if you're, if you're going to train clients here, you have to use the FMS and you have to do these following assessments. And I said, no. And fortunately, I was in a strong enough position at the gym where I had so many clients that they basically couldn't fire me. But, but they actually said, you know, if you, if you don't use these, we have to let you go. And I didn't, and they didn't let me go. So that's just yet another story of why I'm unemployable because I don't like listening to people. But, Clearly. But it just, it, it, it became so clear to me that your job as a trainer is not to assess people. Your job is not to tell them that they're broken. You have no clue whether those things are true or not true. You don't know whether they have weaknesses. You don't know whether their glutes are firing or not firing. You just don't know these things. You don't know these things based off of assessments you're doing in the gym, based off of the assessments you learn from Nazim. Nah, sorry, dude. Like, Hey. NASM doesn't prepare you for that. Like nobody, like, like your certification does not teach you how to do assessments. As you go on in training and do more and more and more and more training, maybe you've done the continuing education to do it. But the reality of it is, in my mind, all that an assessment should allow you to do is say, am I going to hurt this person? What mm -hmm. might this person be susceptible to? Which is actually pretty like superficial a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And then how can I help this person get better with as little risk as possible? Right. That's kind of it. And then of course, how can you measure progress? And so, it, so, so let me stop there for a second because that's not about online assessments in total, but, but I, can, right. I can segue that into a conversation about assessments. Nice. I'd love to hear if like you, I, guess, I don't know, I'm just like, you know, I worked in a boutique gym in Toronto for like eight years or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. or university gym for three and then boutique gym for five. But I didn't really get the exposure to the worldwide industry while I was working in the gym that I have now. Um, and definitely when I walk into big box gyms and commercial gyms and train when I'm traveling and stuff like that, I mean, I see the same thing. You overhear a trainer saying something to a client, you're just like, you don't know that. Like, that might be true. Mm -hmm. Odds are it's probably not. It's certainly not a fact. I don't know. Have you had that experience? I'll, I'll, I'll defer to, to Keto. Um, you know, yeah. Keto, Keto are, you know, are, are the glutes firing or, or are they not firing? Like, what do you tell, you know, clueless? In, what's, what's your experience? And I'll, I'll, sh I'll share mine, um, you know, afterwards. So I want to start by saying that I have been as guilty as any other trainer so about this myself. Dude, like, so on, Yeah, like, this is, totally. This is my like, this admission. isn't. Yeah, like it isn't about placing ourselves like, oh my God, you know, other people are ridiculous for making this mistake. It's like, no, I've made that mistake as well. But as mm -hmm. we know better, we do better. And right. yeah, so now a lot of that stuff starts jumping. Like when you hear a trainer saying that or talking about it or writing about it on the internet, it definitely jumps out like bullshit. Like, you know, where's your proof? Where's the research to support your claim? Right. Like right. How, do, how do you get to this conclusion? Like all these processes that are not there yet. And so it's kind of like one of those kind of like, oh, young grasshopper, 
someday yeah. you will all yeah. it is. alive that all of this yeah. is not true. <laughs> and, and we all, I love that you called that out because I mean, I did this for years and years and years and years and years. And now I look back at it. So like, don't beat yourself up if you're doing this. This is like a stage of the growth. But I mean, yeah. even like Instagram has made this so much worse. It, you ever oh, see yeah. like, like physiotherapists on Instagram? They seem yeah. to be really like these like mobility there's one that I was looking at, like, but he's got like a million plus followers and he does stretches and whatever every single day. And, and I, I saw the one they did this morning and it was, it was like tight calves. Here's a way to self massage your calf. It's like, that's not going to fix your tight calf. <laughs> like your calf doesn't need a massage. Your calf gets tight for a lot of reasons and massaging it is basically never going to help. So what, I mean, maybe it'll feel good, but yeah, you, it's, it's, it's a problem because it doesn't actually look anything. I mean, as trainers, we take so much pride in like, we are getting after the root cause. We are prevention. Right. We are preventative medicine. We are helping mm-hmm. you get stronger so that these things don't happen. If you are in pain, you got to get out of pain for sure. Right. But right. you should be building the strength and the mobility, I love the phrase, you, you have to become um, tolerant to your intolerances. Mm. Like you are going to roll over your ankle. Is that ankle going to be sprained? Or are you going to pop that back and you're going to be fine? Right. Well, right, right. Rub some dirt on your you. joints, you know? Get, anyway, you, you know, the, Ray, um, what do you think? I, <laughs> You know, I first of all, I feel attacked because I came through NASM system originally. That's my that's my CPT, and uh, and NASM nothing all wrong, about this. Nothing wrong with NASM. Um, we love NASM with their baseline cert. Yeah. Uh, their I, anyway, I'll keep my mouth we, shut about the rest we, of what they do. We, but nothing we, wrong about their baseline cert. We 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 love you guys, NASM. Shout out to NASM. But you know, here's what I found. And you know, to your point, continuing education is where it's at, though, uh, because once yeah. I committed to my USP of uh which is your unique selling proposition get your usps to find out there online trainers um you know realize that i was only coaching women and i was only coaching women over a certain amount of years um mm-hmm. you run and then you then you're able to deep dive it, dive into research which is again why your usp is important you can learn more specific things so keto i started taking girls gone strong certifications i started to read books you know like roar and things like that and uh, what I realized is that there are some general tendencies and they really don't require me to do individualized assessments. Uh, mm-hmm. The best assessment, and I hope I'm not stealing your thunder here, Jonathan, the best assessment that any coach can do is a mental assessment of what the why is for the client, their stage of readiness, uh, and what would significantly uh, impact their life in the best way through your training. That's the best. The mental assessment is by far a thousand times more important than any quote unquote physical assessment you can do. Because when you understand how a person takes and why, and the reason that they want to be what they are, and it's not to get a six pack, it's never that. Um, mm-hmm. It's always something else, emotional, you know, interrelationship. Like you get down to that, that's your best assessment. And that's all I've got to say about it. That's all I have to say about that. That's, I love it. Jonathan, I think your mic's oh. off, and I didn't do yeah. it. But if I had sure. the power, I certainly would. We uh, can't hear you, Jonathan. Lord, no. Wait, yeah, this no, is our no, chance. Mic was off. This is our chance. Run with it, oh, friend. Man. Run. Man, I had, a, I had a whole show. <laughs> I've had a whole show in the tank for, oh. for 19 episodes, Jonathan, and I was just about to deliver it. Oh, my gosh. I, you guys are, uh, all that I said, <laughs> friends, was... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm never going to mute my mic again. This, this is my chance. <laughs> all, that I, all that I said there was, no, I mean, I, I love that you brought that up, Ren, because I actually had not planned on talking about that, but I think that's a really good point. I think I'm not naturally empathetic that much. Right. And so- You don't well, say- Shocker. Well, call her me shocked. <laughs> Shut the front door, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that was a little bit harsh. After 19 Everybody. episodes, I would never peg you for that. But I digress. One of the main things that makes online trainers really successful, and I think this is important in gym too, but I think it's particularly important online, is online training requires you to take a much more lateral and proactive approach 
to training your client, mm -hmm. which means you kind of need to know what stuff might happen before it happens right? and program and plan around that. And the best way to do that, to end to your point, is you got to know your client really, really well. You know that all clients that are, uh, let's say, male professional desk sitting type clients mm -hmm. are probably going to be pretty similar, you know, like, right. like high performing um, men who sit at a desk who are in their thirties and forties and maybe early fifties are kind of all going to be similar, right? Like, right. like they probably have a bit of an ego. They want to look pretty good. They want big arms. They mm -hmm. uh, probably have some internal rotation. They probably have a little back pain. Right. And so, if you know these things, you don't actually really need to assess because you can still train the client incredibly effectively by jumping to some conclusions right? and then making little tweaks. So, you know, you're not going to give that client a bench press necessarily. Mm -hmm. You're going to give that client an incline neutral grip dumbbell press to alleviate a lot of stress off of the shoulders. You know, don't lock them into a barbell and internally rotate them. Right. Right. Keep them neutral grip, have the dumbbells for movement. That's just one example. But you don't need to assess somebody and be like, oh, it looks like, you know, you're, 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 it looks like you're internally assessed. You don't need to get them to do a postural assessment. You don't need to, <laughs> I, I mean, you kind of know that those things are probably going to be the case. And the reality of it is, even if it's not, because it's obviously no client's going to be the same, even if it's not, you can still train them just as effectively if you assume that it's the case and proactively program around that. So when right. I say lateral and proactive, um, you, you go into it knowing your client type really well, and this is why you kind of have to dial in a little bit more when you're online trading than in person. And when you do that, you can guide your education towards that. As you work with more and more of your clients, as you guide more of your education towards that, well, then you kind of know what these clients are going to sort of present themselves with. And then you build your programs and your templates that you work off of, and you just take into consideration stuff that you kind of know is probably going to come up. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's not in assessment, right? That's just you being a really knowledgeable coach going into it. Right. I mean, right. you don't need to like, for a woman who has had a child, I mean, Carolina, you're the expert, right? Because you're a, you're a doula too, I think, aren't you, Carolina? I'm trained as a doula, yeah. Yeah, so you're trained as a doula. You work with Girls Gone Strong. You help work mm -hmm. on, their, on their curriculum. Like, yep. like a woman who's had a child, like give me one or two or three things that are like probably going to be. Uh, like I would probably bring up uh, the issue of like incontinence. Like, hey, mm -hmm. do you ever leak? You know, in situations in which you shouldn't be leaking and they'll be like, oh, well, yeah, you know how it is. Like once you've had a kid and, and then that opens up the conversation for like, well, actually, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. There are right. some steps that we can take. But, but, then but even without doing that, here's my question as I interrupt you. Here's, here's my question for you. Incontinence is probably going to be a problem. It's probably going to be like, a problem. Basically, yes. any program you're going to give is going to have yeah, perfect force. Yeah, it's going right? to, exactly. You're going to work around, like, you're going to be like, asked questions so that you like, learn you about that ask? specific client. Yeah, no, for sure. You can, you can pretty much assume. You can also assume that there is some degree of diastasis recti after mm -hmm. they've had a baby, right? Like, sure, we can say that not 100% of women will present diastasis, but, we, you know, it's going to be like 99%. So chances are you don't they need to look so at a video of them sticking fingers inside <laughs> right. their stomach. <laughs> and you can right. totally, like, yeah, like it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that you can, yeah, like you say, like you can make the assumption just because it's so prevalent. So for somebody who works in a computer, yes, if the shoulder, you know, they're curved forward and, and their shoulder overhead mobility, you can pretty safely assume that it's not the greatest idea to load them up like on an overhead press, right? right. It's like just <laughs> make because you know if the shoulders don't want to do that then maybe don't throw a barbell with a shitload of weights on you know just in case <laughs> i mean you probably shouldn't do that to a new client anyway no matter what <laughs> exactly but, <laughs> <laughs> but especially if they don't have the mobility <laughs> so so that's number one with assessments um i think actually that's number that's number two i think what ren said is is brilliant um what he was talking about 
really, really knowing your client and, and, and dial in on it is kind of number one. Number two is this proactive and lateral approach. And number three is there's in, in a gym setting, and this is what we teach online trainer academy students a lot. And we actually give examples of assessments and stuff like that. And we can get into it a bit here too, is this idea of in a gym, there seems to be a lot of emphasis on trying to create the most valid tests. Like, is this an accurate test? The reality of it is, and it's kind of laughable, the majority of tests are so invalid that it's, I mean, we spoke about like, oh, your glutes aren't firing. It's like, you don't know that. Mm-hmm. You know, you have no idea. It's like, oh, it looks like you you have some imbalance here. It's like, you don't really know that. Exactly. Um, oh, there's compensation here. Mm, well, there's compensation. You know. It's like, I mean, maybe you're right. You might be right. Mm-hmm. But if you really, basically... I look at assessments in a gym and, and online is the same way. And I'm basically like, are there any red flags that you need to send this person to a physiotherapist right. or chiropractor or, or mm-hmm. another professional to look at? I mean, right. even a, um, even a pelvic floor physio is like, they're super valuable if you can have yeah. a spinary network. And so, um, so, so, and even body fat tests, I laugh so hard at body fat tests in gyms because mm-hmm. they're so flawed. It's comical. Like bioelectrical impedance as a science is flawed. <laughs> and most, but for anybody who doesn't know, like, like bioelectrical impedance are, are like basically body fat scales where you hold on. And all mm-hmm. that it does, I mean, th- th- this is like a very simplistic overview, but all that it does is it sends a current. There's always two points and it sends a current from one point to the other point. And it measures the resistance between the two, which gives an assessment of how much body fat you have, mostly judging by water and how fast the current's conducted. Right. And the, the, here's, here's why it's flawed. The water you have in your system changes all the time. How much sleep did you get? How much water did you drink? What did you eat? What time of day mm-hmm. is it? Like all of these things. There could be like anywhere from a 3 to 5% difference from one day to the next. Right. That's which has nothing to do with body fat. Not and yet, reliable. And yet gyms are like, get people to set up these scales and they're like, okay, you have 13% body fat. We need to bring you down to 11. It's like, okay, well, I'll sleep a little bit better tonight and I'll be at 11. Like, you know? <laughs> um, so, uh, so anyway, I mean, that's that. Like, obviously, if you have a bod pod or a DEXA machine or you're doing underwater weighing, like that's an accurate body fat test. Major. That's cool. But you probably don't. And your clients probably don't. And as an online trainer, you certainly can't assume that your clients are going to have access to those things. Right. right. And so even though there's, a, there's this movement, there's this priority on, on uh, valid assessments in person, first of all, they're basically not valid anyway, so it's kind of silly. But second, um, online, you actually really have to flip the script and, um, and favor reliability over validity. And so you have to choose assessments that a help you identify any like major red flags, like just watch the person move. You can pretty quickly be like, does that hurt? Yes. No. And that looks kind of funky. Like, like go see somebody local to you to get that checked out and like, give me a report on what's going on. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of the time that won't be anything, but if it is like, you kind of got to know that. And then you just want, a reliable test. You say to the client, you know, what happened before is great. I want to know about it. Send me whatever info you have, data you have, if there is any. But this is day zero, right? This is the beginning of your, of your next journey. We're going to take baseline assessments here that I want to make sure are reliable from test to test to test to test to test so that we can accurately and appropriately measure your progress as we're working together and course correct as needed. And also just like show you that you're making good progress. Right. And so what are those assessments? I love tape measures. Same. I mean, Amber, talk about your welcome package again. I know we talked about it in a previous episode, but talk about your welcome package and what you send and, um, and how the tape measure is involved there. Yeah. So uh, I send a, my printed, you know, on a really nice paper welcome packet, um, but along with a tape measure because not everybody has an appropriate tape measure that's easy to use. Um, because that's the easiest thing to teach them to, to measure consistently. And basically anybody can measure themselves or have somebody close to them measure them. It's really easy to show somebody on video or even written out like, yep. what's your 
um, ASIS, right? Your anterior superior iliac spine. Like, like it's pretty easy to tell somebody how to find that on both sides mm -hmm. and just wrap the tape measure around there. Um, it's, and, and it's going to be reliable from test to test to test. So if you're a guy, you know, okay, let's check your arms. <laughs> right. Women, maybe, maybe not, um, depending on what their goals are. Uh, you know, waist measurements, hip measurements, leg measurements, they're, they're really reliable from test to test. And they're really easy to do. Tape measures are super cheap. They're easy to send in the mail if you want to send them. They're easy to tell somebody yeah. to go buy. They're super cheap, easy. Um, I love tape measures for online clients. That's basically all that you need to do for um, call it body fat, even though, I mean, you could do body fat calculations based off of it. You probably don't need to. And then obviously weight. I know, you know, the weight on the scale doesn't mean that much, but like truth is your clients are going to weigh themselves. So probably it's, so. it's not a bad idea to include that because you know that they're going to do it anyway. Right. Even, you know, us trainers might not love it, but what's really important is um, get them to download an app or you download an app. And when they send you the data, it, it tracks them. And um, on, I know on EOS, the app is called uh, happy scale. Do you remember what it is on Android? It's a different one. Maybe, maybe if you can look it up, Amber, we'll get back to it. But basically all that this does, because you know there's fluctuations in weight every day, and those fluctuations can right. really like mess depress our clients. Your, yeah, they mess with their head. And so what, what Happy Scale does is it actually smooths out the curve. So you can see the trend. And you will see the day to day, but it'll show you the trend. So even though one day it's like, oh, I gained 1.2 pounds today. It's like, yeah, but like overall you've lost five. Right. Um, or whatever, and it smooths it out. So that's a really, really nice tool. That's called Happy Scale. Um, to, it, because, like I said, you could tell a client not to weigh themselves, him or herself. They're going to do it anyway. Yep. So you kind of need to know that. Um, and then the other ones, to be honest, like I love old school like gym class fitness tests for online training. Like I'm talking like one mile run, 60 mm. second push up test. 60 second crunch test. Yeah. I mean, these things, they don't actually tell you how good shape you're in really, but it's really nice because it gives a client a really, really great goal to hit. I mean, obviously depending on what they want to do, you don't need to give them a mile run if they're not like doing cardio, but right. it, it gives them a really nice goal to, to a really nice baseline figure to see. And then they can just try to beat it and they'll, and they'll get motivated by that a lot. And I mean, if your 60 second push up test is increasing, like you're getting stronger. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And so I, man, I love those tests. <laughs> I think they're great for online training, even just like flexed arm hang. You know, it's, it's, they're great, man. Um, what do you guys do? What do you guys give your clients? Um, for me, for my clients, it is mostly oh, because I do work with women and most of their goal is typically to, uh, lose body fat and, you know, lose weight. Uh, we do also like the tape measure is our biggest ally that, and I also like er, almost every woman that I work with has an item of clothing that they have been hoping to get back right. into. So it's like, bring it out, have present. Try it on consistently and, and notice your clothes that you wear every day, what's getting looser, what feels more comfortably, what looks better on you. Like take note of that. Take pictures mm -hmm. of, of that, right? Like that's a really good way of, of assessing change. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm the same. I copied Amber's uh, welcome kit uh, as well as her hair, obviously. And, <laughs> and I, do the, I, do the, I do the assessment with, uh, with tape measure. I, I work on like the, uh, the two out of three sort of ruling uh, like like uh, the branches of government in the United States. So I ask people to do at least two things because uh, I don't want them to trust anyone. So they can do pictures, uh, they can do uh, measurements or weight, but they can't do one of either. They have to do at least two of the three every time because mm -hmm. neither one thing really give, gives a an overwhelmingly accurate picture. But that's, yeah. that's what I do. And it's, like you said, simple is best. Yeah. And honestly, for mobility stuff, I do go the route of sending my 
clients, to physiotherapists, to chiropractors, to specialists, like, because that's what they're for. And that's why I put so much attention in creating those relationships in my own business. Mm. Like here locally, I have one of my best friends. Uh, we started as just as a, uh, as a work relationship, as a work friendship of he's a chiropractor. So my clients, I would send to him, his patients, whenever they started uh, asking about, you know, having interest in personal training, he was sending to me, I have made so much money out of the patients that he has recommended to me, who then mm. became longtime clients who referred their friends and their friends and their friends and their friends. Like I have an entire workflow chart of the, the amount of money I have made of just this one key connection of a, with a wow. medical professional. Take advantage of that. Like you don't need to know about all the assessments. There are professionals work with them. It's mm -hmm. trust me for your benefit. That's great. You know, you know, I've wondered, John. Well, we can talk about that off camera another time, off air another time. But it's take take us nice, home here, John. It's a nice thing to talk about to talk about on a podcast. Yeah, you know, I've yeah. always wondered that. I've always been super. Now right, it's fine. We'll just yeah, talk about yeah, it another time yeah. off air. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's more of a it's more of a systems thing. Uh, for we'll have that conversation when nobody else is listening. Yeah, yeah. That's we'll no we'll have the well we'll save the good conversations for when people can't hear it. Um, <laughs> Which has been our method really through the first 19 shows stuff. anyway. Yeah, uh, exactly. For when like, nobody can how's, hear. <laughs> how's that different from any other show we've done? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Jonathan, take, take us home here. Like, like wrap, wrap it up, B. Uh, take us, take it, you know, what are fundamentally overall, what are we looking at? Assessment? Give us your best advisement here. Fundamentally with assessments, I think the rules are as follows. Number one, it really helps the better that you know the type of client you're working with. Mm -hmm. because number two, the best way to train clients online is to take both a proactive and a lateral approach. You want to anticipate things that might possibly happen and either plan for them in advance or laterally step, sidestep them in advance. Mm -hmm. That actually comes before assessing. And in almost every case, you should be able to do that in a way that in no way compromises the quality of your program. The third is to look at assessments and always favor reliable assessments. Look at the beginning of your online training journey with your clients and tell them this as day zero, as this is the beginning of their journey. This is a new journey. Take the data, take the information that they give you from beforehand. Look at that, but don't look at that as this is what happened because it's like, it's like purple monkey dishwasher, right? Like it's broken telephone. I mean, they're, what they're telling you is what past trainers and stuff have told them. You have no idea who these past trainers are. They might be really, really good. They might have done great assessments. Odds are they probably came to conclusions that weren't quite valid. And then the client's trying to communicate to you what happened based off of that. I mean, you see how there's just like so many places that... So look at what they're telling you and just take it, take it as a data point. Like it's not that it's not important to know, but it's certainly not necessarily factual. So take that as a data point, communicate to them that this is your new day zero, and then choose assessments, choose tests, mm -hmm. choose markers of progress that you know can be reliable from step to step to step to step to step while you're working with that client. And you can be reasonably confident that whatever you're being reported is accurate. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, this is Amber. Amber, you got anything to add here? Any as we as we close out the show, you're good. You've talked twice. That's enough. Uh, we used up all of Amber's <laughs> linguistic skills too early in the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, and she is tapped out. She's got nothing left for us. Um, you know, one thing. One favor to ask Amber when when this episode comes out, can the quote card say it's like purple monkey dishwasher? Uh, because that's the greatest Jonathan Goodman quote of all time. That's we the next fan art uh, yeah. request. <laughs> okay. Oh, Send in your yes. pictures of purple monkey dishwasher. Uh, water? Is it water Send or water? Pictures. Send in your fan art pictures of me as in the character of a purple monkey loading a dishwasher. <laughs> that's, that's the greatest, that's the greatest internet it. ask of all time. You know I can make that happen. Oh, she <laughs> will. 
I want to see it. Do it. Yes. Do it. Make it so. This has been episode 19, the Purple Monkey Dishwater episode. Washer, I'm sorry, episode of the Online Trainer Show. You can catch the show notes over at onlinetrainer.com slash podcast. And we'll see you here for episode 20. Oh, by the way, keep those reviews coming, guys. So, so here's something funny. In our office right now, Joey, who's our creative director, was listening to just the end of the podcast mm-hmm. uh-huh. and sketched me at a dishwasher just now. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yay, Joey. Yay. Let, me show, here, pass it. let, me, let me show the I'll Is she show like the a forensic thing. sketch he's artist or something? How'd she do that so fast? He's just, he's just a really good artist. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Bring it a little closer. A little oh, closer. my gosh. That is ridiculously good. Oh, that's pretty right. good. She's got the headphones in there and everything. And, and she, she captured the essence of the oops, I'm sexy beard, too. You know, the <laughs> accidental stubble. You know, oops, I'm sexy. Uh, way to go. I think the other quote card, Amber, needs to say, oops, I'm sexy by Ren <laughs> Jones. <laughs> this is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>